Hi, my name's Scott Naismith, and I'm a landscape painter. Not had a video out for about three months, but this one is hopefully going to be the start of a few new ones to come out. So this one's about the Statue of Liberty. Now, half the reason I've not been around for three months is very busy schedule of showing in America. I've been showing through uh, my prints with eye canvas. I've been across in Chicago where I've been at Fulton Market Gallery. And the following video is going to feature some of the video that I took when I was in Chicago. I've also released a book called Scottish Skies. It's available through Jeremy Mills Pub Publishing and you can get a link from my website but I'll also leave a link in the description to buy it. It's about £20 which for 110 pages of full colour imagery and lots of text about concepts and where I go in Scotland and all the rest of it, it's a, it's a pretty good value for money book. The following video is the Statue of Liberty acrylic on linen uh, and it's now available on iCanvas um, as a print. So you can actually buy the print 40 by 60 is the size of it, full size, actual size of the original. Uh, the original which hangs in the Fulton Market, Market Gallery in Chicago uh, and is available from them. And the prints are available in all various sizes um, and can be shipped all around the world. So you can buy a print there as well. I'll leave the print link in the description. There's a little hidden message in the painting somewhere. You can figure that out if you want. Leave a comment and tell me what you think that may be. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching and thanks for subscribing on things like Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, all that stuff. Thanks for subscribing. I'll see you in the next video. anyone familiar with Chicago will recognize those images at the start of the the film and that was from the architecture tour um, and the boat trip in Chicago which I thought was well worth a trip if you're ever there um, the stage I'm at here is just putting in the darks after I have done what I don't normally do which is do a drawing uh, an initial drawing uh, to work upon um, I normally think that drawing before painting can restrict your um, fluidity uh, when when building up uh, fluid and loose paint. Um, however, some subject matters require you to just map it out to get the details just right, especially a specific subject matter like this. A good technique to prevent it from being too restrictive is to do the drawing after your initial um, layer of paint. In this case it looks pretty abstract uh, but it is based on uh, some stars and stripes and I do have an idea of the composition uh, where the torch will be, uh, where the head will be etc. So I'm uh, working that first layer very much towards the composition and then mapping in the drawing. Uh, then comes the darks. I put the darks in very quickly because um, it's quite difficult to see where you are with such a busy um, place to start with the, the colour that was initially put on. So the darks help you uh, just anchor yourself in the, uh, in the composition uh, so you get your bearings. Um, 
Also, uh, what I wanted to, to talk about is a little excerpt from the, the book that I talked about at the start of the at the start of the video, uh, Scottish Skies. In it, there's a little ex explanation of concepts, and here we have um, concepts at play in just a different subject matter. And it's down to the addition of spray paint within my work. Uh, what I like to think of spray paint as is the representation of gas uh, in the three states of solid liquid gas. Um, so your your fluid paint is liquid, your solid uh, palette knife paint is the solid, um, and the the spray paint being the gas, which fits into the concepts that I like to have with my painting. So uh, that is partly the reason why I use spray paint. I'll just read you a, a little excerpt from the section called Particles in my book. The concept of this morphing of shapes and the gaps between them relates to my cons constant reference of the relationship between land, water and sky. I include the presence of water in many of my landscape paintings, not only because it's often uh, present in the broken coastline of Western Scotland, but also it makes up the three states of solid liquid gas. In chemistry and physics, we kind of learn the difference between these states is just the proximity of the particles and how they're held together. And while f the process of freezing, melting and vaporizing can have a binary result, I like to blur the blur the lines uh, between the three states, solid, liquid, gas. And this blurring of the lines is uh, represented here because uh, this time I'm using spray paint and acrylic, no oil this time, because what I wanted to do was integrate the spray paint and the, uh, the, the brushed paint, uh, in this case, spray paint and acrylic. Now, using spray paint on top of oils isn't a good idea because of the drying rate of spray paint compared to oils, but spray paint can be used on top of acrylic paint, acrylic spray paint, um, once it's completely dry. Um, so this is why there's no oil paint uh, present here, but there's an integration between, uh, so I work acrylic paint, uh, or start with spray paint, then acrylic paint, then spray paint, then acrylic paint, and then fuse those layers together a little bit. Um, which kind of ties in with the, the blurring of the lines, uh, solid liquid gas. I, I like to, to break the, the silhouette of shapes. So yeah, as I said in the, at the start of the video, you can actually buy this as a print, any size print, full size, whatever. Uh, you get that at iCanvas.com. Just search for Scott Naismith. To buy the book, just search Scott Naismith. Scottish skies or click the link in the description. Thanks for watching. I will see you very soon on the next video and until then, see you later. Bye.